This is the second of three videos about the bubble sort. Previously, you were introduced to the bubble sort algorithm, which repeatedly scans a list, comparing adjacent pairs of values and swapping their positions if necessary. In this video, you'll see some pseudocode for a bubble sort and some enhancements that can be made to the algorithm to make it more efficient. The third video includes visual basic code for implementing a bubble sort. Before looking at some pseudocode, first let's think about how the bubble sort can go about swapping the positions of a pair of items. To do this, the bubble sort makes use of a regular variable. The first two items are compared, and in order to swap them, the first of the pair is copied into the temporary variable. The second of the pair is copied into the previous position in the list, overwriting what was already there. And then the contents of the temporary variable are copied over the second of the pair. We've effected a swap. The next pair of values are compared, but these don't need to be swapped. Now we'll compare the next values. A swap is necessary. So the first of the pair is copied into the temporary variable, overwriting what's already there. The second of the pair replaces the first of the pair. And then the contents of the temporary variable overwrite the second of the pair. Another swap has taken place. Let's see that one more time. We compare a pair of items. The first of the pair overwrites the contents of the temporary variable. The second of the pair overwrites the first of the pair. And then the temporary variable's contents overwrite the second of the pair. So that can happen several times each time the list is scanned. There's one more thing we need to consider, and that's how the list is actually stored. More than likely, it'll be an array variable and it'll probably be a zero-based array. That is, the elements will be numbered from zero. So now let's take a look at the pseudocode. This is the loop which scans the list, comparing pairs of items and swapping if necessary. Now remember, we're comparing pairs of adjacent items. So if there are 10 items in the list, we need to make nine comparisons. Our inner loop will scan the length of the array minus 1. But because the array is zero based, we're scanning from zero to the length of the array minus another one. In other words, our inner loop scans from zero to the length of the array minus 2. You can see the if block is comparing a pair of items. It's comparing an item in the array given by index number i with the next one along given by index number i plus 1. And you can see also how the temporary variable is being used to do the swap. The inner loop needs to run several times, so the outer loop controls the number of times the list is scanned, that is, the number of passes through the list. This time the outer loop is counting from 1, so it counts to the length of the array minus 1. Remember, if there are 10 items, we need to scan the list 9 times. And here's some visual basic code. The variable declarations aren't shown, nor is initialising the array with data. But what is shown, the heart of the bubble sort, is almost exactly the same as the pseudocode. The main difference is the use of the uBound function. This gives us the biggest index number of the array rather than its length, and the biggest index number is already the length minus 1. This means there's no need to subtract anything at the end of the for statement of the outer loop, which controls the number of passes through the list. It runs from 1 to uBound of the array. And we only need to subtract 1 instead of 2 at the end of the for statement of the nested loop. Now let's think about how we can enhance the bubble sort. Here's the original list. You should have noticed that the largest item is at the end of the list after the first pass. The second largest is in the correct position after the second pass, and so on. This means that the inner loop can run one less time with each pass. Here's our original pseudocode. Now we're using a variable to keep count. This is incremented. It grows by one each time we pass through the outer loop. So we can subtract this value 
from the number of times that the inner loop runs each time we scan the list. Now if we start the value of count at 1, then we can make an adjustment here so that the inner loop runs to the length of the list minus 1 minus count. But just a moment, we already have a variable which is incremented every time we pass through the outer loop. It's I pass. So we can make one more adjustment. We'll just subtract this from the number of times that the inner loop runs each time the outer loop runs. It doesn't look like much, but if you think about it, this enhanced version of the bubble sort is doing half as much work as the original. And here's what the enhancement looks like in Visual Basic. There's another way we can enhance the bubble sort. If we scan the list and there haven't been any swaps, then all of the data must be in the correct order. So the next enhancement you're going to see causes the bubble sort to finish early once that data is in order. Here's the pseudocode. We have a Boolean variable which we've called swapped and we set that to true whenever a swap takes place. The outer loop will run until such time as that variable is false. Each time the outer loop begins, swapped is set to false. So if there is a swap, it'll be changed to true. If there is no swap, there's no more work to do and the outer loop will exit and the bubble sort will finish. And this is what it looks like in Visual Basic. To summarise then, the bubble sort scans a list comparing pairs of values and swapping them if necessary. For n items in the list, the list is scanned n minus 1 times. There's various enhancements that can be made to the bubble sort to make it more efficient. The bubble sort is good for small lists of data, but with large amounts of data it can begin to struggle. Next time we'll look a little bit more closely at some Visual Basic code to implement a bubble sort.